Can I, brothers and sisters, invite uh, my next uh, our next speaker, is a young man, Muhammad Bayat. He was on uh, the Bradford convoy last time with myself. In fact, we travelled together in the same car. One of the nicest young men I've ever met in my life. Uh, and I want to ask him to come over and give us a few words about his eyewitness account of what happened on the Botila. Please give him a, a great big hand, uh, Muhammad Bayat.
that surrounded the decks and they just went with one that they were trying to everybody sit down, sit down, show up, get inside, sit down. And at that point, people were just bleeding to death when, you know, the drones could have saved them. Kept us there for maybe an hour or so while these people fled to death. After that, they took out some of the injured, some of the women, some of the elderly, and then the most of the youngsters and all the men who were left inside the inner decks. Then took us out one by one, where they gave us a beating. Um, I was taken out at one point by two hundred and occupation soldiers. Um, I was then grabbed by the back of my neck, pushed down, and another soldier got me from the front of my neck, pulled me towards the group of my boss, and then began to elbow me in the face. Um, I was then cuffed from behind, both hands were cuffed behind my back. They stripped me down to my, down to my underwear, they took all my possessions off me, and then took me upstairs. I was getting my clothes back, and I took me upstairs onto the, onto the upper deck, which was in the blaze, blazing sun, where I seen the other men, the elderly, the women, um, as well as the rest of us who were being, being taken up, and we were then put in stress positions, where we were held for almost four hours. And this was the blazing sun, during this time, nobody was going to any food, any water, and the people that were pumped, which were the majority of us, the blood, the, the, they pumped us so tightly that the blood had stopped circulating to our hands. There were elderly men there who collapsed due to, the, due to the heat, due to the fact that the blood had stopped circulating to their hands. They were pleading with the soldiers, people pleading with them to, uh, to, to loosen the cuffs on the elderly, to let them sit, sit up, and you know, to no response. They simply stood there over us, guarding us at one point. After this, they then took us back inside into the inner deck of the ship, where we were held for, I don't remember the exact time, but from the moment they attacked to the time we finally got to Ashdod. Therefore, it had been 24 hours. So they purposely kept us there for 24 hours um, when the journey should have only taken two or three hours. Uh, at that point, we were then, all our fingerprints were taken, all our pictures were taken. Uh, we were told that we'd illegally entered in jail despite the fact that we'd been kidnapped in international waters. We were then taken to a prison in Birishiva um, in the middle of the desert. Uh, in the prison, I was not allowed out of my cell. I was held in, in, in the cell for it was around 36 hours, a day and a half. And during that time, we were all given food and water once. And we were not allowed to phone call, we were not allowed to contact our families. Even when the British consulate came, which he did come on the second day that we were there, um, he requested, he did try to help us, he requested that we give a phone call. Um, he requested that we were, we were allowed to be, to walk around. He, he, asked, he asked them to. We asked them to take us out of the cells, um, but the British consul also he was refused. And, um, so that we were held there, and then obviously the following day we were invited back to Istanbul, Turkey. Um, that's pretty much, probably as much as I can remember uh, at the moment. Um, the only thing I'd like to say is that, you know, all the accounts that you're hearing, the treatment that everybody went through, the elderly, the women, the youngsters on board, this is only a, a, a tiny fraction what the Palestinians go through every single day. So I just like everybody to, to think about that.